Hey everyone, it's I'm new here because uh, you're you're new here. I'm Pastor Goodman. This is uh, Pastor Matt Richard. How's it going? Good to see you, Harrison. You too. We're talking about the Apostles' Creed, the second article. This is kind of the big one. This is about the second person of the Trinity, Jesus, the Son of God, God Himself. Jesus is not just sort of a, a role model here. He is God made man to die and rise again and ascend to judge. That that's the second article, right? Yeah, yeah. And you know, I think what's so amazing is is what this article says about us, about you, about me, about what Jesus did for us. I mean, that mm -hmm. that that is. That is, I mean, something that should just make us beam with joy with to pronounce from the rooftops that, that you know, that he is one, Harrison, he's one, Matt Richard, he's purchased us, not with gold or silver, but with his precious blood. He's won us from death and the devil himself and the world and all these things that we may be his own. I mean, that, that, that it doesn't get any better than that. It's beautiful. It's, it's not only sort of that the salvation that is absolute and secure, like because you can't contribute to something that's already bought. That that that's like the 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 junk that I buy on Amazon coming to try and pay for the stuff on it. No, you, you're the thing that gets bought. It's done. You can't add to it, but you also don't have to. Your sins are forgiven because Jesus died. You are saved because Jesus died and rose. Everything is okay because Jesus died and rose for you. Right? Absolutely. You know, and and, and there's all these parables out there that that speak to this. And there's this one. And, and, and I've always taken this, there's that parable of, of Jesus where he finds what, that treasure in the field. And then mm. uh, he talks about this guy who finds a treasure in the field and the guy goes and sells everything that he has in order to buy that field to claim that treasure. And I remember when I was a kid, I'd always hear that parable. It's like, man, have I really sold enough stuff, given up enough of my stuff so I could actually go and purchase the kingdom and claim the treasure of Jesus? But when we flip that around and we say, well, the treasure is not God. And it's not us being the one who has to sell everything to go and get that treasure, but rather it's the son of God who left the glories of heaven, who gave up everything, put on human flesh, came to us, purchased the field, purchased all of us, not with gold or silver, but with his precious blood. Then he comes and he digs us that treasure out of the ground, getting dirt underneath his fingernails and says, this dirty treasure is mine so that this treasure may be my own, that we are his treasure. Uh, it sounds scandalous, but we are as poor, miserable sinners that that Christ, that that son of God would pursue us all the way down to the grave, to death itself, death on a cross to win and purchase us as poor, miserable sinners that we may be his own and to last in that everlasting kingdom. And then the very how this 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 part ends of this, this part of the uh, uh, creed, it says this is most certainly true. It is true. And that's the bread and butter, the 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 the. the quintessential hope of us as Christians that we belong to Jesus. And the thing that makes us beam actually shows the worth of it. Uh, so the, the the lie that the devil would tell us is that you are worth what you can do for the kingdom. You are worth what you can do for Jesus. You are worth what you can do by the law. Nothing is worth what it can do. Something is only worth what somebody else is willing to pay for it. That That's true anywhere else in the whole wide world too. A diamond isn't worth a lot because it can do stuff. It's just that we're willing to pay a lot. You are worth, not the sum of your actions, not how much you contribute, not how much you you were worth what was paid for you. And that that is the, the suffering and death of, well, Jesus, God, God, that you are worth one death of God. That's yeah, priceless. Yeah. You know, I, I've said this numerous times, and I think, I think sometimes my parish, my, my awesome church, St. Paul's Lutheran Church, I'll sometimes say in our Bible studies, and I'm like, you know, I have no idea why I'm a Christian. I don't deserve to be a Christian at all. I've done nothing to contribute mm. to the salvation. And and even not only a Christian, but a pastor. I mean, it's just like, it's like, it just, it, why, why, why am I forgiven of my sins? Why did he claim me? Why did he bleed for me? He has every reason not to, every mm. reason not to. What I deserve is I deserve death and hell and damnation itself. I don't deserve anything. And yet he bled and died for me. And it, it should make us ponder all of our lives, and and really, when you when you really really ponder the gospel, and that 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 we are poor miserable sinners, we can't give anything. You know, I've heard it say we can't give anything to God except our sin. Well, I don't even want to give God my sin. I want to clean that up to my own. Yeah. You know, and 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 there's no bottom to the sinful nature of ours, and yet He bled and died for us. And so when we contemplate that He suffered and bled and died not only for me but for you and for this entire world to redeem everything to make it anew, then you live each day the same. By golly, uh, what a gift. Everything is a gift. When you contemplate in light of what Christ has done, the air we breathe, the food that we eat, the water that we drink, the, 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 the kindness that we receive from it, it's all gift. Uh, it's all gift because we don't deserve any of it. We deserve to be that treasure, what, rotting in the ground, but yet he pulled us out of that ground and said, this treasure is mine.
Mm-hmm. And, and that that little connection, it's it summed up in the words for you. It, it, it really, really matters because it's also in a lot of ways defines what's not in the creed. See, the creed is not a, a confession of everything that Jesus did. I mean, John Owen closes the book saying there are many other signs that are not even written in the scriptures, but these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, and by believing may have life in his name. Jesus walked on water and it's not in the creed. Jesus healed the sick and it's not in the creed, cast out demons and it's not in the creed, but the things that are in the creed are the things that are for you. That, that, that save you. And it's great that Jesus cast out demons. It's great that he walked on water, but that honestly doesn't help you on a really bad Tuesday. But Jesus died and rose for you. And that's your everything on your worst of days. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and again, I mean, let's just read these words here. That I may be his own and live under him and his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly most true. Certainly true. Uh, this is most certainly true. And then I, I just love that, that, he redeemed us not with gold or silver, redeemed us from what? From sin itself, from death and the power of the devil, that we don't belong to those things. Those things are powerless compared to the blood of Christ and the reign of Jesus who reigns at the right hand of the Father. And so that uh, we're not purchased with what? Gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and his innocent suffering death. And so what that means is that his blood, his suffering, his death is for me. It's for you. And so this is going to take over yeah. and be the core of everything that we do. That this this is going to be the impotence behind everything that that is is going on in your church, uh, or at least it should be. Uh, this is that this is the thing driving all of the the sermons behind all of the pastoral care, shaping everything. Is that how do we give Jesus to sinners? Because this this death, it, this resurrection, it takes over everything else. Yeah, and 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 that's the thing though is, is we're so forgetful. I mean, we're so forgetful, and and we're 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 prone to wander. We're prone to leave the God that we love, uh, the God that loves us. And so I don't know about you, but I need to hear this over and over and over. And it's just, it's amazing. It's like, you know, I've, I've heard the gospel thousands of times, but every time that I hear it, it's like it's fresh and new. It's like, really, again, you did that for me? Because it seems like, I don't know about, about everybody else, but I know for myself, it just seems like, you know, I just, I, the, the sinful nature is just like, man, it just really, again, Richard, you did, it's like... Get you it know, together, it's man. Like, it's, Just get it's it together. Like, it's like, oh, that you know that that sinful old Adam. That it's like really that's that's new. And then you realize Christ even died for that. And to think about all the sins that He's died for in the past, present, and all the sins that I will commit, uh, it just it's 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 just humbling. And 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 so I need to hear this message over and over and over again. And the people in my parish need to hear it over and over and over again. You can never stop hearing this message. It's just so good and so true and so profound. Uh, that it captures our life, uh, the life of the church, to know that we're forgiven, that Jesus is ours and we belong to Christ. Amen. Thank you. Amen.